um, you know, being rejected. Most of the stuff that happens is actually only an opportunity for those virtues, right? There is no situation. You're driving with the car. They can't hear you. You're ridiculous. You're screaming at yourself. You're making yourself mad. <laughs> I will tell you, Austin is one of the most frustrating cities in America to drive in. I mean, they've got Austin's motto for a long time is that uh, we don't go, they won't come. But uh, people came anyway, so there's always ridiculous traffic. People can't understand the roads because they're all new. And then the locals don't want to be here anyway, so they hate doing anything from California. But anyways, I think driving is always a good test of one's stoicism and one's philosophy. You know, like, if you ever caught yourself getting really mad you're going to drive in someone's new car, they can't hear you, you're ridiculous. You're screaming at yourself, you're making yourself mad. Or I always love someone gets angry and so they start driving really dangerously. Like, who is that going to punish? Like, you're going to die in an accident and that's going to be punishment for the other person. I'm not sure how that works. So I think at the core of stoicism is this idea from Marcus Rios that the concept consequences of anger are always worse than what provokes it. Seneca wanted to know, like, you wouldn't return a kick to a mule or a bite to a dog. But that's what happens. Someone drives poorly at us or someone's rude to us and we have to return the favor and that literally comes to the risk of our own health. And it's not. So the stoic would hopefully uh, be a kind and a generous and forgiving driver, certainly a patient driver. Next time you see someone get really upset with your former driver, just realize that that's how bad you look. Like, you look as insane as you frothing at the mouth and you get the screaming, looking to go off driver, you're not that